I want to say that uh, this is partially because of a conversation I had with a, another pastor several weeks ago. Um, and um, I want to say that I'm going to use an kind of an illustration this morning. And this illustration is, is not mine, okay? This, I will share with you right now, this illustration comes from Pastor Sam. I stole it from him. He knows I stole it from him. I told him I was going to share with you that I stole it from him. Um, well, if you let the person know that you're stealing and they give you permission to steal, then, then it's okay. Because then technically it's not really stealing if they give you permission to have, to have it. Right. So, as we begin, I ended last week by saying that we will not be able to understand all of God. God is not totally understandable. If you can understand everything of God, if you can know all of who He is and all of His attributes, if you can know everything about God, then I will share this with you. You have too small of a God. Because our God is greater than that. And I'd like you to think for just a second, how many of you know what a screwdriver looks like? Okay? I'd like you to imagine that I am holding a screwdriver in my hand right now. Okay? It's a regular slotted screwdriver. Now we know what a screwdriver looks like. I don't have to be a mechanic or a carpenter to know what a screwdriver looks like. I don't have to be a mechanic or a carpenter to understand what a screwdriver does. If you look it up in the dictionary, it says, a tool fitting into the slotted head of a screw for driving in or withdrawing by turning. That's the whole definition of a screwdriver. You use it to turn something in or out. Now, of course, if you're like me, you also use them for flying, <laughs> for chiseling things, for poking at things. Um, if you have a long-handled one, long one when you drop something, rather than crawling underneath, you use that to grab it out. And you can scratch your back with it, yes. <laughs> it's a tool that we can understand, that we can know. Now look at the definition of God in the dictionary. The first definition is the supreme being, the creator and ruler of the universe. Second, the supreme being considered with reference to a particular attribute, i.e., the justice of God. And the third definition, a deity. Okay. Now, you can imagine, and you just heard, those are a little greater definitions than putting a screwdriver into it and turning one way or the other. There's a little more to a deity. To understand a deity is a little more. Our sun, for example, if you look at it, is a small star in comparison to most of the universe. Okay? It's an amazing thing, but small. Now, I was going to ask, can anyone here explain all their interworkings of the sun? But then I thought, there just might be someone in here who could do that. Who could share everything about how our sun works. I have a piece that I do want to share from Alfred Rywinkle in his book, Wonders of Creation. He says, the heat of the sun is so great that a body of solid ice as large as our earth would be melted within two hours. 
if the sun came closer to the earth, or excuse me, I lost my spot here. If the earth itself would fall into the sun, it would be vaporized in a matter of minutes. The distance between the earth and the sun is 93 million miles. Astronomers have estimated that if this distance were increased to 123 million miles instead of the 93 million miles, our planet would be a perpetual frozen Arctic and life on it would be impossible. If on the other hand this distance were reduced to 60 million miles, the surface of the earth would be a glowing furnace, again making life on it impossible. But the wonder is that this ball of fire of incalculable heat is exactly 93 million miles away. The exact distance to provide the earth with a balanced amount of heat and life to make life in all forms possible and also to divide the earth into climatic zones and to make variation in plant and animal life possible. Here again we notice the perfect balance in nature. Even among these remote heavenly bodies and the perfect balance has been maintained with mathematical precision ever since this cosmic machine was set in motion. There is no rational explanation for this supreme engineering achievement without a supreme, intelligent, and master builder. We can never understand again everything of our God. But we are going to look at some things of our God this morning. The first thing we're going to look at is our God loves. It's a simple fact. He created us to fellowship and worship Him. He gave His Son for us. This is an easy concept, except sometimes we find it hard. And sometimes, and I'll just share this with you, and this may surprise you, sometimes we as people are hard to love. Gotcha. First of all, God picked Israel as his chosen people. And I'd like you to look at Deuteronomy 7, 6 through 8. Deuteronomy 7, 6 through 8 says, For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples on the face, face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love on you nor choose you because you were more in number than any other people. For you were the least of all the peoples. But because the Lord loves you, and because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers, the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So they were not some special people. They were just chosen and far from perfect. God knew they would fail before he ever chose them. And yet he said, you are my people. God has never renounced that choice. I would like you to look at another verse with me. Zechariah 2.8. For thus says the Lord of hosts, He sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. John MacArthur says in his notes, Harming God's chosen people 
is like striking the pupil of God's eye. How many nations or kingdoms have tried to destroy the Hebrew people? How many of those governments still remain? Think back through history. I think, and I will boil it down to two words, the way to treat the nation of Israel, be nice. God has never renounced who they are. We are not different than them. We are hard to love sometimes. But believers in Christ are also chosen and called to be God's people and heirs to all God has. Look, look with me at 1 Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a, his, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous life, light. Then Romans 5.8. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We do not, as some like to believe, replace the Jews in God's eyes. But we join with them in service. And we pray that they will see the Messiah as Savior. We pray for that. Like we pray for everyone. We are specifically commanded in Scripture to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Do you notice it, it did not say pray for the peace of Washington, D.C.? I'd like to add we need to do that too. Okay? We need to be praying for peace there too. The most famous verse on God's love, the one we recited together just a few weeks ago, John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For those who have keep in track, that's three weeks in a row we've read that verse during worship. We should know this and we should know the love of God. Second point is God wants us to serve and obey. We looked at some of this last week. We are called to be His with service and obedience in mind. Look with me at 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11. There are diversities of gifts but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one... Oops, lost my note here. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit... To another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healings by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. And then follow this up with Romans 11.29. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. 
looking at obedience there. 1 John 5, 1 through 5. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and whoever and everyone who loves him who begot also loves him who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, burdensome, burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. The third point I want to make, following along with obedience, is that we must believe in Christ. Going back to this verse we look at, we have to accept him. God's desire is that no one be lost, but he will not force the issue. For example, remember back to the heart of Pharaoh when Moses went to him the very first time Pharaoh on his own hardened his heart and said no to Moses. Despite what God said, told Moses to say, Pharaoh went no. From that point on, God knew the heart of Pharaoh. Well, I'm going to tell you, he knew the heart of Pharaoh before Pharaoh ever said no. But God knew the heart of Pharaoh. From that point on, his heart was hardened. And God made sure it was that way. And he hardened the heart of Pharaoh to allow himself to be glorified. He showed he was more powerful than all the false gods of Egypt because he he gave Moses the power to demonstrate how useless the gods of Israel were. Look with me at Romans 10, 9 and 10. that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, you're going right now, going, wait a minute, you were talking about understanding God. Now, you started off with understanding God, but then you've gone to what we're supposed to be doing. Well, what we're supposed to be doing is understanding our standing before God. We are not equal to God. In Cameron's book, Cameron's book, Bible Doctrines, he, he begins with four omnis of God. He says, first, God is omnipotent. This means that God is all-powerful and almighty. Then he goes to omniscient. God is all-knowing. He knows everything. Then he used one, omnisapiens. And this is all the wisdom of God. And he goes on to explain that Knowledge is what one knows. Wisdom is the perfect display of that knowledge. So God is all-knowing, and God knows how to display that knowledge. Then the next one he uses is omnipresence, and that is God is everywhere present at the same time. You're not going to get away from where God is at. As we look at those, we could be overwhelmed if we do not understand our standing before him. Our God is perfect, holy, all-knowing creator. Those are some of who he is. 
He is God. Look with me at Romans 1.20. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. He is great and he is God. We worship and serve the great three in one, the unchanging Godhead. I have been reading this book for a long time. I will tell you, there are times when I still read that book and learn something new. And if it ever gets to the point where I don't, well, then I've made a mistake. We learn and read and share and grow together. Revelation 4.11 you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. We looked at that piece about the sun and about the exact placement of the sun up there and how it is not moved and not changed. Each of us wake up every day with a new opportunity to serve and see and learn something more of our God. Each of us have the ability to understand a little more of our God each and every day. Knowing that someday we're going to stand before Him and still not understand everything about Him. But our God is great and our God is loving and wonderful and perfect and present with us right now. You can't reach out and touch him, but you can't take a breath if he doesn't want you to. You can't see him with your eyes, but we know that he is there because we see his creation. We see what is even invisible. I talked to the Iwana kids um, last year about the air and how you can't see air. It's not there. I mean, there's, you know, I can wave my hands. I can make, I can make it feel like I'm moving air with my hands, but I don't see it. But if I don't have oxygen, I'm in trouble. Well, you know what? I can't physically put my eye on God. But without Him, we're in trouble. Plain and simple. The big takeaway from this whole thing is how big our God is and what we owe Him. And the awe and the respect do Him. Sometimes we can be a little flippant about how we treat our God. He wants us to talk to Him. He wants us to approach Him. He wants to hear our cries and our prayers. He wants to know what we're feeling. He knows it, but he wants us to share it with him. But when we do that, 
Let's remember this. He bigger than we are. And he is creator. And he is due respect and awe and all of our love. We're closing singing song 39. And this goes along with the message. This is my father's world. The battle is not won, but someday it will. And I hope and pray we are all on the side of victory. Because the losing side, well, nobody wants to be on the losing side. Would you join me in prayer? Father, bless us as we serve you. Be with us as we worship and praise you each moment of our lives. Thank you for the knowledge we have of who you are. And thank you for being so great that we can't understand all. Continue to bless all those who call on your name. In the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen.